Okay, we're live. All right. This technology uh, is throwing us through a loop. I apologize uh, to all those. I, I know we said we'd be on a two. This is my fault. This is not Heather's fault. Uh, so I was running a little late today. We're still seeing patients and um, just crazy afternoon. So we're here. Yay. All right. <laughs> Yay. Woo. We made it. We had a little anxiety ourselves trying to get on. So uh, we're going to talk about anxiety today, parents, and uh, things that you can do. And so let's jump into that, Heather. What are you suggesting? How, what, what, what suggestions are you giving them? Well, um, I think a good way to lead in before we get into activities is how to talk to your kids about coronavirus in the first place. Um, because if, you know, find out first of all, is some of these tips come from Dr. Robin Silverman and some of them are things that I was already saying anyway. So that makes me feel smart because she's awesome. <laughs> Kidding. But uh, she is awesome. Um, but find oh, out, you know. Just a pause. Did you all do your, inter did you all do your Facebook live yet or is that coming up? Uh, she was on national news, ABC. Most of it got cut off here locally because the governor broke in and, uh, with some announcements and updates, but it's probably it's going to be recorded in places, and a lot of the country did see it. Um, okay. But, but but just so y'all know, she is a child development expert, a parenting expert. Mm. She has a podcast, books, and she's on our national advisory board, and yeah. is one of the most down to earth people. And we're really excited that she's part of our team. Um, and cool. yeah, she's amazing. And and even going forward, one of her huge roles is going to be support for parents. Um, so, and, and we brought her awesome. on before, before this even I wanted, to, I wanted to plug that. But. Yes, but, oh, yeah, I'm no, that, she's amazing. But, so one of the things is to find out what they know. I mean, the best thing is, number one, it's not good to have media on in front of your kids 24-7. I mean, that gets parents stressed out. Calm begets calm. <laughs> so if you get kind of worked up and, and anxious, they're going to feed off of that as well. And um, we want to take it seriously. This is a serious situation, but your kids might think that if someone gets this, they're, it's deadly period. Like if somebody gets it, they're going to die. Find out what they've heard. And that way, you know which things to correct and where you need to fill in the blanks. And you know this doesn't need to be a one-time conversation. Keep the lines of communication open. Uh, Think about how, you know, if, if something happens to one of your friends and you feel powerless to help them, something mm -hmm. really, they lose a job, they get bad news about a health condition, even unrelated to this, somebody, uh, a relationship issues, how you love that person so much, you wish there was something you can do and that feeling of powerlessness. So letting your kids know uh, to do their part. There are things you can do and going over hygiene and precautions and, you know, we're not going to share food right now. Sharing is great, but we don't want to share germs. You know, that's not something you share. And um, we're going to stay away from sick people, but, but continue with your normal routine as much as possible. Demonstrate self-care for them. Um, and also, what can we do to help others right now? You know, we all want to feel useful. And, and right now we're not in control of, of the virus, but there are many things we are in control of. And um, get them doing chores. You know, that is another way where they feel like they're being useful. And you talked about how communities are kicking into gear and pulling together. Even when we're sleeping, really smart doctors and other officials are working to keep everyone safe. And self-talk things like, even if I'm scared, that doesn't mean I'm in danger. You know, I am right. safe. Those kinds of things. Um, there are many more tips out there, and we even on our Facebook page have some of these. But that, that's what I want to say to start with is communication is important all the time. And mm. if, if you ask your kids, and this happens a lot with teens, uh, questions about, how, you know, how are you feeling? And be let them be authentic. Let them know it is okay to feel scared. But what we want to work on is how we handle it. If, if you act like their feelings are not okay, you are taking away their sense of self. We've, we've talked about that before. Yeah. Um, and so there are a lot of books that you can read. Y'all heard me talk before about freespirit.com. They just had a new book yeah. on about worry and they, it's bilingual. And um, they, there are Miss, Mrs. Winter's Bliss. I have no affiliation with any of these, but she has amazing growth mindset books. 
about character growth and, you know, persevering through this or, you know, different character traits. So use literacy to grow their social emotional skills at the same time. So, yeah, I I think you point out to such an important aspect of this. Yes, we're going to start talking about some activities, but the first barrier that needs to be overcome is just the line of communication, right? I mean, yeah. Anxiety in and of itself will always brew if we don't know what's happening. It's this lack of uncertainty. And you can only imagine being a young kiddo and hearing all this bad news. They need that line of communication. They need to know that everything's going to be okay, that mom and dad are there, that they they provide value, right? And so I Excellent point. The lines of communication need to be absolutely open with these kiddos and give them the opportunity to uh, communicate uh, and, and verbalize their own fears, but also gives you an opportunity to reassure them and, and know how much you love them and all that good stuff as well. So awesome. I love that. Thank you for bringing it up. That's an important. Yeah. Topic. Awesome. Uh, what else? So uh, we open the lines of communication. Okay. We've established uh, you know communication with our kiddos. What else are we suggesting as far as activities? What what else have you all been doing? Well, one of the most basic things, and, and some people think this sounds so simple that it's overrated, is teaching deep breathing. When we talk about deep breathing, we're talking about diet from the diaphragm, meaning your belly expands, breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth. Yes. Because that distributes oxygen the way it needs to go. Anxiety kicks in the fight or flight response. And when you are in survival mode, blood and oxygen are pulled away from the large muscle groups. Like all your your body goes to preserve those life preservation. And we're going to put all the other bodily functions on hold right now. And so uh, deep breathing helps distribute oxygen. And by the way, when you breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth, that air is more filtered as well. Mm -hmm. As far as even that's another actual hygiene thing that we don't think about. We're talking about washing hands and distancing, which are important. But also, if I breathe through my mouth, I can take bacteria and germs right straight to my throat. So that's just a that is not an overdone thing. That is there is science behind why that is so important. So it's basic, but it is it's foundational. the other, go ahead. No, I was going to say, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, I haven't scheduled yet, but I'm going to go over, I'm going to do a Facebook live deep breathing and it's going to just, it, you did a great summary of it, but I'm actually going to walk people through it. And so thank you for pointing it out because uh, I'm getting people prior to the virus who were mouth breathing and stressed out. You can only imagine as we're getting locked in our house, as our routine gets shifted, they're just, inhaling through the mouth so yes breathing through the nose or inhaling through the nose is very very vital for our health so, so right. and, even, right. and even as they do that one you know they can be having that mantra that self-talk in their head as they do that you know thinking as they breathe in i am safe everyone right. take you know, have those mantras or you can have them you know count as they do it just slow deep breaths mm-hmm. in through the nose out through the mouth so um, and that that's one of the reasons we all know that exercise in general is important. It gets rid of excess energy. I've seen a lot of posts from mamas like, is it bedtime yet? You know, and it's seven o'clock at night. Uh, people are a little stir crazy. Um, but yep. exercise on top of being good for cardiovascular health. I mean, if they're in fight or flight mode, that is getting that oxygen redistributed out to the muscle groups. You're, you know, that kind of thing. So um, there are so many in it. I know a lot of you don't want to go to the gym right now, but you can go for a walk, yes. get fresh air. And um, there's a book called The Listening Walk. You don't have to have the book to do this. You, yeah, we want to work on sensory motor development during this time because that alleviates anxiety. Yes. Many, many yeah. emotional dysregulation issues are under our, the underlying factor is the sensory motor system. We've talked before about how if you're misperceiving sensory input, you can be a fight, in a fight or flight mode, even if you are not in danger. Think, think about how you feel if a car pulls right out in front of you or you walk in one night and that your coat rack looks like a person and you have that <laughs> moment of panic. You're good. Without what we're facing right now, 
kids who have anxiety disorders, it's just going to be very exacerbated. Kids who usually don't have it, it's normal to have a little bit with this, but, but we need to manage it. But a listening walk where you're very mindful. And, and if you hear a sound, like, have them locate sounds and try to guess what it is. You know, is it a cricket? Is it a frog? What kind of bird is it? Um, you know, any, any, um, there, there are some the rustling of the trees or for visual perception, have them point out any flowers they have. If they're young, you can have them name the colors, you know, but listening walk, you know, yeah, that, that is, you're, you're building mindfulness, you're getting oxygen flow going, you're getting fresh air, you're having family time. It's just, it's so simple, but it just makes a big difference. And um, like chores. That. You pointed to this. So if my kids weren't uh, three and two, this is something I would be implementing right away. <laughs> yeah, you know, chores are, so, we talked about them feeling empowered. I mean, responsibility, you and, and you know what, you can t tie it in with how a community is pulling together. We're pulling together as a family and there are all right. things we can help. And, and again, you're giving that empowered feeling, but also if they are sweeping you're giving them proprioceptive input, you know, or va depending on their age, vacuum, vacuuming, mowing the lawn, helping cook, you know, knead the dough, let them get down and dirty. Crafts, crafts are good for all ages. A lot of times people think that is for the younger kids, but yeah. it's like making friendship bracelets and you are working on um, hand-eye coordination, you, you know, and so many other things when you do that, you're giving them tactile input as well. Um, you know, puzzles, build forts. If, if you have them cleaning, you can also make it a scavenger hunt. There you you can hide clues. You can make a game out of it. And when they do a good job of dusting, you know, this is spring cleaning time anyway. You know, uh, hide clues or hide quarters or dimes or whatever. And the more thorough the job they do, it's also fun. And you're giving them sort of a goal, like how many clues can you find? How many dimes or whatever it is? can you find um but cooking is cooking is great because you know if they're older find a recipe they want they're learning sequencing this we do this first the second you're teaching them the, the, the concept of the whole the whole is the final product and the right. details and the parts are the ingredients that go in sequencing pre, pre things, prediction once i yeah. understand the concept of first second next finally and I have to have those basic concepts. That's why kids can retell stories usually, what happened first, second, third, before they can predict what's going to happen next, the part that is the rest yeah. of the story. As Paul Harvey awesome. used to say, my dad was Paul Harvey. <laughs> I just <laughs> dated myself. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> He's but, famous, though. Lots of people know who he is. He's famous, yes. I grew up hearing him. That was my, one of my dad's favorite things. <laughs> That's awesome. So I love what you, I love what you talked about because uh, we talked about initially the hygiene, right? So in that line of communication, talking about hygiene, but this is the perfect time to give them something to do proprioceptively. Uh, you can make it fun with my kids when we clean up. I set a timer because they like to beat the timer; like they get really excited yeah. about that. So uh, Alexa, you know, everybody yells at Alexa because my kids have to help me, uh, you know, two, four, whatever minutes. Uh, but I also like the idea they would love to find pennies, right? Because that would they would love to do stuff like that or quarters. We got a piggy bank we could uh, attack for some uh, stuff like that. But not only are you encouraging to keep, you know, hygiene wise, like keep everything clean, uh, but you're also giving them something to do appropriate stuff. I love it. That's fantastic. So after I interrupted you, there's no between us. So. Yeah. <laughs> no, great. I love it. when I rewatched this last time, I was like, I interrupted you too. And I didn't even know it at the time because I didn't hear you <laughs> until after I was talking. Um, yeah, so yeah. anyway, we, we, yeah, sorry about that. But, um, the, um, the, the, uh, kinetic sand, kinetic sand doesn't make a mess, uh, you know, which is a bonus and you can hide clues in there. You can, if they're, if you're working on the alphabet and better yet, without pulling it out, have them feel the letter and guess what it is. They are using tactile proprioceptive, you're working on literacy. And then, yeah, they can make words out of it. And how many words can you make out of it? Um, or if you're just, if vocabulary is really an issue, um, you can even make a word and then play a game. Let's say that they have the letters. I'm just making this up on the fly. So C-A-N, can. 
what if we just change one letter and it's something we use in the kitchen what would that be pan if yeah. if um we're talking about if it's an older you know, if, if we're talking about how long someone lives that is their life span you can play a game and have them create their own word ladders uh, for vocabulary development vocabulary development is really underrated and th this is fun and, and anything they're doing where it's crafty or creative it is it is more than fun it is more than sensory and um, barbara frederickson i she's like a hero of mine in in research of positive psychology she's from the university of north carolina i can't tell you how many times i've quoted her in research papers um, in my doctoral program and um, but when you are being creative you are it's called the broaden and build theory is what she calls it mm -hmm. when you are being innovative and creative it expands your mind to the big picture and guess what yes. there's never been a time more we always need big picture there's never been a time we need it more than right now where we don't get mm -hmm. bogged down in detail we see the big picture we faced coronaviruses before and you know look at look at how quickly this is re resolving in china obviously you don't have the conversation with a four-year-old but based on the, the age of the child but when you have a big picture that equates to perspective that equates to being yes, able to pick up on other people's point of view and seeing that the positive amidst some of the doom and gloom right now and so right. creativity actually helps with big picture contextual skills um, yes. so that's really important Absolutely. Uh, so many of our, uh, our neurodevelopmental kiddos do not have that ability or they struggle with it. And so giving them a fun way to do it, especially in this time, you know, like with this all being locked up and everything, take advantage of this. This is a, this is a great opportunity just to help further and foster these skills that they need anyway. So uh, that was fantastic advice. I'm also going to be putting some games in here that I found uh, online so y'all can build your own games or create versions of it. If you're watching us right now and you, you play one of these games or you have a suggestion, maybe you all have your own like family game, the ASB, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. Uh, Tell us how to do it. You know, there's other families that want to know this information, right? And so, uh, yeah, if you have your like your own game or setup that you guys all invented, uh, please uh, comment that. We would love to hear that. So, very cool. I want to I, I want to say one thing about games since you brought that up. I'm so glad you mentioned that. Is it is developmentally better to play games with actual manipulatives like cards or dice mm -hmm. or. Uh, anything like that because you're you're getting motor input. It's also family time around the table. But but you can use bingo cards. Memory memory is one of the best games you can do. Working memory is a thing that increases anxiety if you're struggling with that. It decreases your cognitive load, and you have to know if those match to do that. You're using visual perception. Same thing with card games and um, but you're giving them. They're using fine motor skills to pick up cards or dice and so forth. They're feeling it. So some tactile and proprioceptive input. Um, musical chairs is fantastic for so many reasons. Nobody gets kicked out of chair in this game unless you want to. But uh, when the with music, you're giving them auditory stimulation for auditory processing. Mm -hmm. When the music stops, they stop moving and stop at that chair. That helps equilibrium. I know when I'm moving and I know when I'm still. And, yes. and of course the circular thing of it. And then whatever emotion is in the chair, they, you can play charades and act it out. And everyone talks about what makes them feel that way. It can be worried, happy, excited, surprised, whatever it is. And the adults share too. Because mm -hmm. when kids know that they are not the only ones who have a rainbow of emotions, it is very validating for them. It, it's not just enough to say, it's okay to feel scared, although that's very important. It's also good for them to know things that make you feel that way. Of course, you're going to use discretion in the examples you provide. Um, but uh, there, there are just so many. I spy. You're, you're working on visual focus where they have to take in the whole picture and not just what's right in front of them or in the periphery. And they're following directions. Simon says, and, and you, they have to, you're working on impulsivity when you do that. Because if you don't say Simon says, they don't carry out the activity. But have them march and do oh, jumping jacks. Oh, we, we've heard that a few times. We played yeah. that a few times. We're already working with all kids on that one. Yeah. Um, they love that game, by the way. Simon says, or uh, Red Light, Green Light. Oh, that is they Student Center. Well. We have that. A lot of our families use that. And it's just, it teaches them 
the concept of go and stop, you know, stopping impulsivity, it's following directions, it's fun, they're getting motor movement. I, yeah, and you know, uh, you can be creative. If you play hopscotch, have them, they're working on, they're getting proprioception from, you know, the pounding on the pavement, equilibrium to stay upright and balanced. They have to, you, you can have letters in the squares or numbers or words, have them pull things out of kinetic sand where they're getting the tactile and it tells them what to do, have them follow a direction or answer a question beforehand. Um, be, you can be creative with the games you usually do. Um, heads, head, shoulders, knees, and toes. If if your kids know the body parts, switch up the order of that because you're you they have to stop and think about it. That you're helping them with regulation. So even the, yes. the oldie goldies that you do, you can be very creative and make them address so many other things. I like that. Um, all right, so uh, to at least touch on here very briefly is, and I read it and I know others have suggested this as well, but when you have a game, there's an order, there's a plan. Uh, and so one of the things that I've heard, I want to get your input on this, but um, is they were saying now that parents should essentially kind of write out you know, there's variations of this, like write out the kid's day, like, you know, from if they're in school, whatever, or they have online, you know, from like whatever, 9 to 12, you're in class. And then, but also write out the parents so that the child can understand what the parent's doing, which decreases anxiety, but they also understand what they're doing. And so it helps uh, kiddos with their anxiety level. Yes. Again, you know, anxiety often comes when I don't know what to expect and you're helping them know what to expect. And another key to really get their buy in on that is to have them help you create the schedule. Anything, you know, that's like Stephen Covey, how to win friends and influence people, you know, help people think it was their idea. You know, and it, but, but you actually are taking their input, not just we're not pretending it really they are. A part of the decisions anytime that you can have them give them choice you know even if you have time blocked off where you can either work on uh, reading a book or you can do this math game there, there are so many games think about all the vocabulary you know scrabble da, 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 whatever have let them pick that is you're empowering them and they don't feel as out of control and they know what to expect so all of those things are i, I love that i think it's really important and journal. Yes. I know I said this last time. Journal it is so important whether or not this is going on. And um, find yeah. your skills. Yes, it's part of communication. Yes. It, it's part of communication. yes. And when you when you are holding a pen or a crayon, because little ones can draw pictures or they can cut them out and glue mm -hmm. them. You're forgetting fine motor. Fine motor. I, uh, Dr. Robert Slywester, one of the a former professor of education at the University of Oregon talked about how fine motor is so foundational. You you are doing self-regulation, self-regulation to not rush through your letters, form them correctly. There is a, the, the repetition of the strokes is very calming. And um, you're working on attention. You are working on the basic executive functions that we've talked about mm -hmm. so much. You're working on proprioception because I have to know how hard to hold it so I'm not white knuckling that crayon or pen. Yeah. But it's also not slipping out of my hand. You're working on visual perception to form the letters, put them in the line, space your letters correctly. You're working on language growth, literacy, working memory. What was I writing again? And, and continuing on with that. You can have them write a story um, based on a book you read. I mean, and by the way, I'm going to be doing a webinar on Tuesday that hmm. about um how to grow social emotional skills and alleviate anxiety using literacy and it's going to be it's going to be really unique i think and some stuff that some have probably never heard before i i started out as a literacy specialist um earlier wow. in my career. so um it, it will talk about the difference between learning to read reading to learn and all these things to do that help kids with decision making emotional regulation, um, problem solving, et cetera. And, and so um, that will be on Tuesday. Uh, is that on Facebook or where, where, where will we find it? Um, there's going to, yes, we're going to create an event on, you'll, you can find it on Brain Balance of South Lake's Facebook page, Brain Balance of Mansfield or Brain Balance of, which one did I say? South Lake, Mansfield, Katie. Um, and yeah. Yes, there will be a Zoom link um, where you can, Log in. We'll post it there. Yes. 
Awesome. Um, I will try to steal that and put in the comments, or if you have an opportunity, put in the comments as well. Uh, also, go to those Facebook pages and find them. So that's on Tuesdays at morning after. Um, I believe it's going to be at three o'clock. Um, okay. I, <laughs> I'm not a hundred percent. I'm pretty sure it's going to be at three o'clock, but I will. I will know by the end of today. Okay. So make sure you go on her on those pages, one of those pages, and at least. Uh, put interest so that way you can be alerted if there's any time changes. Okay, awesome. Um, anything else that we should discuss here? I know we were gonna go shorter today. It's just, if, if y'all want any specific activities for your child, you can email me at hwells, uh, my name's down there, but W-E-L-L-S at brainbalance.com. Let me know, you know, the age of your child, what you're working on, what kinds of things you need. Some, some mamas are out there homeschooling right now. And yeah. I, I have a library of resources, some of which I've created and some of which I've gathered over time uh, for decades. And I'm happy to be a resource for you so that, you know, we, we always talk about how we're chasing moving targets with sensory motor development, academic development and so forth. That one of the things there's there's a blessing in every challenge. I, I just think that's pretty much always true. And one of the blessings for any kids that are out there struggling is that right now school is standing still. And this is an opportunity for your for us to be able to help your child fill in those gaps in the meantime. Yeah. Uh, Brain Balance as a whole is doing uh, remote home programs, but um, I also, you, you can reach out to me individually and I can really customize something that will help you. And I'm, I'm really happy to do so. Awesome, okay. So reach out to Heather. Uh, again, in this actual comment section in this video, I'm gonna put some games up there that I found. So y'all can have some games. Again, if you have a game, a whatever Wells family or Asby family game that you all have created or have a variation of a, a common game, you know, put that in there. We'd love to uh, know that. There's other families that wanna do that as well. Um, and that's it. We're gonna do another, we're gonna have another one of these shorter 30 minute ones. Normally ours are 45 to an hour. Uh, I bet we could get to 90 if we tried um, <laughs> without problem. Uh, but we're gonna do another one of these next week. Heather and I will look at our schedules. I'm still seeing people. Heather's still, you know, part of meetings and running all, you know, doing all sorts of stuff. So we're still very busy, but we want this. You're still the, open the, too, yeah. Demand. We really want to provide for you and for your families. And so we know that the families are stressed, the kiddos are stressed, there's anxiety, and our hearts are in serving your families and these kiddos. And so uh, we wanna try to provide more for y'all during this time. And so uh, watch out, we'll do another talk sometime next week, probably again at the end of the week, I would imagine, and uh, we'll go from there. But uh, look in the comments, please share with families who need to hear this. If either of us can help you, Heather has given you her information. What is your information again, one last time? H Wells, W E L L S at brainbalance.com. All right, perfect. You can reach me at Dallas Synergy Chiropractic at gmail.com, Dallas Synergy Chiropractic at gmail.com. And then lastly, I'm going to be doing a webinar uh, on neurodevelopmental stuff on the 28th of March. Uh, if you'd like to be part of that, it's going to be a webinar in a private group. Please uh, go ahead and uh, message me and I will get you a link to that. All right, Heather. Thank you as always. You've been wonderful. You've provided immense value to these families. Thank you so much for everything you do and the communities Thank that you. you serve. And I look forward to speaking with you again next week. I do too. Y'all stay safe. Thanks for sharing your time with us. Thank you. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye. Bye. And if I can end it.